All right, guys, Carl from Studio In Car. Either side of me in these two white boxes are a new Sony release that I let go of about a month early <laughs> and got in trouble for it for, uh, from, from Sony. But uh, yeah, that was an accident for anyone watching in the US because it was apparently you lot that weren't happy with it. The new Sony Mobile ES subwoofer, the new Sony Mobile ES front component speakers. Now, one thing you can't ask me is how they sound because they're in their boxes. We haven't fitted them. Um, they're pre-release product. We weren't allowed to let them go until today, which will now probably be a few days after. So we haven't installed them. We will install them into something to see what they're like, to test them. Yeah, their price points are 229 for the 6.5 inch component set, 166 for the subwoofer. I can't explain the low price point, high end market in between the two, but let's just hope in typical Sony fashion, they're such a big, company is such you know huge on technology that the majority of their products we find are priced far lower than they should be in the market therefore outperforming everyone else and costing next to no money now typically not what our business is about but if we can provide a product that has a substantial benefit over a more expensive product i.e. it's better at its price point, or sorry, it's better at the higher price point than that product, we'll use it. That, that's, that's just what we do. So let's have a look at them. Sub or, let's have a look at the speakers first. Like I said, this is a white box pre-release product. So um, it won't be too far away from, from, from how it will be packaged, but uh, I'd imagine it'll have Sony all over it and some emotional pictures of speakers. One thing I noticed the first time I took these out was um, the depth of the tweeter. So these are the cups. It comes with multi sets of cups. There's cups all over the place. So depending on how you want to mount them, it's up to you, but I would probably go for a relatively flush fit because that tweeter is tiny. It's one of the lowest profiles I've, I've ever seen from a tweeter. Yeah, typical four ohm driver. Relatively light. So I don't know if there's use of Neo in there. I think there will be, but yeah, not bad looking either. They've chosen like an anodized orangey gold, I'll, I'll do you a close up in a minute for their finish and which signifies their ES lineup. That's their uh, mid base grill, so that pops off. That's just for carriage, of course. And uh, that's the driver there. So they've got this sort of slash roll edge, um, which they say all sorts about in their marketing, which I'll link to down below proprietary cone material. They've got plenty of cooling around the driver and it comes back through the spider there. Uh, and that's a fairly fairly heavy speaker. It is, it's a plastic basket and it looks good. You know, it's quite tucked away. I mean, when we're looking at what, what did we say? 229, so its competitor would be something like the, the Audison AP165P which is a firm favorite in here for our entry speaker. That's kind of where we start at. You know, we'll see how they perform with, against them in, in, in a, you know, in a, in a car at some time, but, uh, and we'll let you know. But up, up to now, of course we can't because they're, they're still in their box. This is their new crossover, which I quite like actually. I can't take the cover off it right now because I haven't got a screwdriver on me, but it's, in, it's an extremely basic crossover um, with some high quality air center coil, decent cap, decent resistor in there. It just looks, it just looks a decent quality, you know? So that's that, relatively small as well. So yeah, 
can tuck it away somewhere. That's if you use it, so if you want to run them active. I'm quite interested to see how these sound. They don't look like much, but I'm sure if Sony have put their ES badge on it, we'll have to wait and see. Right, that is the, the mid-base model number XS162ES.U. You can take that as just an ES. The dot .U is a trade thing, I think. Why is it? Why does it never go back? Right, let's leave that there for now. Let's have a look at the stuff, shall we? Now this looks pretty much exactly the same as that mid-base looks. It's just much, much bigger. And the, uh, the dust cap is different as well. Got that in one hand. And I am mighty, but that's not a drastically heavy subwoofer. So if you judge your subwoofer qualities on, uh, on weight, probably want to look elsewhere. You shouldn't really be doing that. Not, not now, 2021. Things are lighter. Things can have lower resonant frequencies and not be the heaviest things in the world, you know? And once it's strapped down, it'll get a fair bit more rigid. Now this trim looks like it comes off. That's the driver. That's its side. They have some form of funky name for this five step thing. Again, the air cooling through the outside of the magnet section there, pulls it through and goes back through the former. And then you've got the vent in the center there and the lovely Sony ES logo, which I know means a ton to a lot of people, a lot of sort of old school guys who remember the original Sony ES product. It was held in, in, in very high regard I mean, I, like I say, I can't necessarily give you a review on the product. I can only suggest that its price point doesn't put it in the bracket of the older Sony ES stuff, which was quite expensive and particularly high end. What I think is that um, they've put the ES badge on the product. They've done a lot of work you know, to the drivers and there's a lot of technology in there um, I'll be very interested in products at the same price point and a comparison between the two because I imagine in, like I say, t typical Sony fashion, they're going to be, be way beyond their price point in terms of performance. So yeah, I, uh, you're going to have to wait for that one because I, I cannot fairly tell you what I expect or how things are going to sound right now but they certainly look and feel high quality. You know, they're light, yes. They're a sort of poly plastic material, yes. But you have to bear in mind their price point. Their price point, this is 166 pound. All right, I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but I think that puts this subwoofer as the least expensive subwoofer that we sell or that we have on our site. So therefore to judge it by its peers is, is not fair. This on the other hand, at 229, sitting there with things like the Audison AP APK165P or the, I can't remember the Hertz model number, but they've got a component set in that range as well. Focal have got component sets in that. I think the flax range will be around there, or the top end of the axis range, I can't really remember, but there is extremely stiff competition at 229. So I'll have to plug them in, I'll have to wire them up, and I'll genuinely let you know what I think, good or bad. But anyway, that's the brand new Sony Mobile ES. There's a couple of other things that we, we would probably not really take into into the workshop for installation, things like a six by nine driver and stuff like that. You know, we, we just don't usually have need for them, but they have a need to, to provide that to their sort of larger clients. So we didn't get all of it, but we, we, you know, we've got these sets here to work with. We'll put them on a decent 
at a half decent, maybe go for something Class D-ish, D a little bit of DSP in the amps, so something around the five or six hundred pound mark that isn't going to ask tons of them and should have its own sort of performance benchmark and we'll, we'll kind of go at it from there. But yeah, that'll be video number two, which will be in a little while. All right, Sony Mobile ES, is it ES Reborn or is it riding on the ES name? We'll see. I'm Carl, it's so a studio in car. Take it easy, guys.